Hi everybody, it's Christopher Naiman. Today we're gonna to talk about metallic threads. Yes, I know some of you are cringing at the thought of metallic threads. And yes, when all of us begin our sewing career and we see these wonderful metallic threads, we take them home, we try them, and uh, we don't have much success with them, and uh, a lot of curse words are made, and frustration, and hair being pulled out, and uh, you definitely want to be alone when you're trying this stuff, because if anyone in your family comes around, they're going to be running for their lives. Well, listen, the, the situation with metallic threads is they are a decorative thread. They are made from um, metal and polyester and all sorts of sorts of the non-natural um, fibers. And there are special ways that you have to set the threads up to be used so you have, uh, you have flawless, wonderful results with them. And there are all different brands. There are many, many different brands of metallic threads. And I have used them all and I have successfully used them all. So what I wanna to cover today is the type of brands, and these are just some, shows a lot more out there than what I have here. And then I will take you and show you some of my favorite notions that I get success with these threads and uh, set up all that good stuff, okay? So we have a little, we have a cone thread here. This is a metallic cone thread. This one's by Coates and Clark. Um, you can see that here and then we have uh, another cone metallic thread by Robinson Anton and then we have signature cone thread uh, we've got sulky sulky metallic thread here's a small spool of signature Madeira you can see they all, they come in all different spools uh, size spools and then once we, these are your basic metallic threads. Now then you get into the specialty threads that are look like tinsel from a Christmas tree. And here's one right here by Gunold. Now, if you can see this in the camera, it, you see it does look like tinsel. Okay, and it has sparkle. And we fiber artists love this thread because of the sparkle. And I will show you how to get amazing results with this. So here's one by Gunold. And then we have one here by Superior, it's called Glitter. We have Madeira, uh, the Madeira Jewel, and they make uh, a hollow shimmer. Uh, this is uh, Sulky, I love this one. This is an opal color. This is one of my favorites to use is this opal color. Just absolutely beautiful. And then we have uh, here Sulky and Variegated, and here's Sulky. They come in all kinds of colors. So, you know, once you understand the setup and how to use them, it's no problem. Now. If we're going to be using the sliver threads, top stitch needle. Top stitch needle, um, depending upon what fabric you're stitching it on, you size 14 on up. And uh, this is some people, some companies even recommend a top stitch needle for the regular metallic. I have used a regular metallic with a top stitch and the sliver flat threads with with the top stitch. I have success with it. Also. Um, for regular metallic threads, you can use a metallic needle. So it depends upon the manufacturer, um, but I would suggest that you experiment. You know, it's one thing I teach in my books and on the road is test and experiment on your own. If you're not sure, that's what you have to do. Now, you know how I've been on this path to tell people to study needles. Look at this. This is from Class A needles, and I'm going to show you something. With every Class A needle you buy, it comes with a booklet that describes the different type of needles there are. So you'll never have to be in the dark on what the different type of needles are and what they are to be used for. These are your base guidelines. And with anything with a base guideline, like I said, they're, they're guides, okay? And then you will experiment and go from there. You know, years ago when I was watching television, they said to to sew on faux leather and vinyls, you use a ballpoint needle. I get results with a leather needle. I also can get results with a top stitch needle. So it depends upon the hand of the fabric and the vinyl, okay? And then we move on to even bigger cones. There's a Robinson Anton, it's a big cone. And then if you're a power sewer and you do a lot of embroidery, you can go into the King Kong, the big spools. Yeah, that goes on. Yeah, you can use this on your regular sewing machine. 
because there is uh, some special uh, notions that have been created some accessory units that I will show you um, on how you can achieve results using these bigger cones. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a couple notions that have come out that are uh, just a revolution, a revolution for using small and large cones. So let me clear this up and I'm going to bring out those notions. Okay, what you're looking at is the Martelli Thread Spindle Dispenser. Um, I'll post uh, Martelli's website on here so you can go to there. This is a, I call it the tower, okay? The metallic thread tower. And what it does is you're going to set it behind your sewing machine, not on the side where your flywheel is because in case the thread just so happens when you're done using thread and you have it hanging there, you don't want to get caught in that flywheel on the side of the machine. Anyway, this goes behind the machine and this raises up and down. The thread sits on there. This is sitting on ball bearing wheels. So this is going to feed perfectly beautiful. There's a little cap that goes on here and it even has a little plastic cover that you would put on here. And your thread would fit, come right through that little split there come up here through that split and then it pulls through the dust cover keeps the bunnies out and then it pulls through on the side and you've got perfect feet now that works for this type of thread as well I haven't taken plastic off of this yet works for that size cone thread as well okay and then if you have this size of a spool of thread well guess what we got the monster the mega monster size right here and like this extends up and down also this is great to use on your multi-needle machines also embroidery machines and then you would put this on there uh, it's got the plastic cover and a cap that goes and it feeds from the side and because of the ball bearing patent ball bearing wheels on here this whole this whole uh, unit is uh, is a patent unit by Martelli notions look how easy that spins alright now some people you know in the old days when we put thread on our embroidery machines, our big machines, the thread would pull up from the top. But what happens when it pulls up from the top? It kinks. It kinks and breaks. And then you have ladies that have been told in the home sewing world, if you use metallic threads like, like this, for example, you know, put it in a cup six feet away. I even heard people say stick it in the freezer. Nah, you know, come on. I'm going to show you how to use the smaller spools on your sewing machine to get outstanding results. And we'll do that next. Okay, so now we're looking at the top of my sewing machine. This is my combination sewing and embroidery machine. If you have a machine like this, which is my Baby Lock Alissimo, um, there is a special attachment you can get for uh, the majority of the Baby Lock machines, and that is this side, side dispenser spool for metallic threads. And the way you put it on is it goes on back here. You gotta push it in all the way, lock it in there. Your spools of thread, would go now make sure when you put your spools of thread on that you peel the paper off of your spools of thread any little paper left will cause it to could drag and catch so then you put your spool of thread on there and what I always like to have it feed from underneath it's, it's a little joke in my classes about how you put toilet paper on at home and I consider this the man's way sorry ladies but the man's way works better and you put a larger spool cap on what I do is butt it up all the way and then back it off just a tiny bit so when it comes off it comes off and has no friction and you can put three up on there and what you've got is let me move this camera so you can see all three up there and what you have is beautiful sewing with metallic threads here you know here's this thread I haven't taken this, the tape off yet but I just want to show you there's that thread that size and then even your smaller sizes will fit on there and it's beautiful. This is by Tacconi Corporation. And guess what? You're gonna love it. Oh, look at me. I just pulled that off. Let me show you something. I'm gonna zoom the camera in here so you can see something. See what that says? Made in USA. That attachment is made in USA. Isn't that great? You know, Tacconi Corporation has brought back manufacturing into the USA. Whatever they can bring back to the USA to manufacture, they do. They, they also distribute the Ricard and Simplicity vacuum cleaners, which are now being made uh, in the USA. So I think it's great when a company is, is trying to 
do equal fair trade, equal trade on and off coming in and out of the country. It's wonderful. So anyway, now I'm going to reset the camera up and show you some um, uh, setup techniques for uh, sewing with metallic thread for the way I set it up with my um, sewing. Okay, I am back and here is my setup I'm going to do. I'm going to use this uh, metallic thread. It's coming off of my tower here. It's feeding through my machine and all set up there. We'll go back down in a minute. My setup, I've got, I'm going to do some free motion work by the way. I've got my tension at 3.0 and um, I've got my feed dogs lowered and uh, let's see here here's my icon to lower my feed dogs which gets lowered automatically and then what I've got is I have a top stitch needle in and my top stitch needle is size uh, 14 and I'm using a purple Bigfoot I like using a purple Bigfoot um, only because it has a nice spring action to it it's got wider coverage of the mushroom foot and especially when I'm doing my um, my punching with my fabrics and using like Angelina that like grass I pungent grass and it's got the frills all over that purple Bigfoot uh, gives uh, more coverage to lay it down so nothing gets tangled up so now I'm going to uh, set my camera up on a tripod and do some free motion for you okay so now I've got a piece of uh, duck cloth here in black I've got some interfacing. Um, this is a cutaway uh, actually stabilizer for embroidery and uh, I'm going to, my, my machine is set so the speed is reduced to half. I always have success when I uh, free motion or embroider, automatic embroider when it's a cut in half. So now that I'm just going to go through, I'm just going to do, you know, your little stippling that you all like to do um, when we quilt. Uh, you can make little circles and you can see as I'm doing this, I'm having great success. The thread is not breaking. Listen, I'm not doing anything here perfect. I'm just testing for you, okay? So all you perfect people out there, um, this is for the non-perfect people so they know they can do this, okay? So yeah, we all get anal at times and I get pretty anal too sometimes when, I'm, when people are telling me, you know, they, they, I'm trying to encourage people to do things and they might give you one excuse at the other. But listen, bottom line is, when you really want to do something, you're going to put your mind to it and you're going to do it and you're going to learn, okay? And please, if you take what I have to teach you, apply it, and believe me, what I'm teaching is I get the results, okay? And I get these results. In every video you see what I do, I have these results. So, there we go here. and I'm getting some great results on this. So you can see that my needle is penetrating well. My thread is not breaking. I'm just doing some different things here for you like this. Okay, and I'm getting some great results from this. Beautiful results. Let me cut this for you. And let me hold it up so you can see. Just beautiful, beautiful results. Get my light over here so you can see the beautiful, beautiful black embroidery there. Isn't that nice? So pretty. I just love, I love doing the, uh, using metallic threads. I just think they're so, they, they just bring a pop, you know? And listen, like a lot of you, when I wanted to learn how to use metallic threads and I walked into my sewing stores, I mean, they held a cross up to me every time I mentioned metallic threads because and they'd say all oh, the machines don't like the metallic threads or the machines don't like this brand. And it's like I said, I've used every kind of brand and I'm having total success. It's the setup, everyone. It's the setup. So what if I were to go from cotton? What if I have some vinyl? What if I want a free motion with metallic and vinyl? Let's just say that I've got a, this isn't the prettiest vinyl in the world, but this is what I have to be able to show you. But let's say I'm making a, a vinyl pillow and I want to do my own embroidery designs or I maybe do an automatic embroidery. Well, here it is. I'm going to show you what I can do with that. And there it is. Doing this on vinyl. And you know, the textured vinyls that look like real leather or alligator or crocodile, we call those faux leather, okay? Um, and this, this even resembles a, a leather, so it's got a little bit of a texture on it, slightly uh, faux leather. You know, in the old days, we called them pleather, and people were feared pleather because pleather never held and ripped. So remember, there's different grades of your faux leather and your vinyls. So, but here I go with this, and you can see I'm having success. I've got the same 
same uh, stabilizer on the back and I'm having flawless results I'm not breaking any threads and um, beautiful also if you notice my ergonomics how I'm holding this I don't need gloves I'm not pushing down with my hands like this why is that do you realize if you push your hands down like this and you try to do this all day your are your shoulders are gonna kill you look at I'm using the peace sign just my two fingers on each side to move the fabric it makes a big difference so much better ergonomics you can sit here all day and do this don't need gloves don't need his little fingers you know I look at some people and they have to use all those contraptions it's like oh my god you know sometimes the simplest things that God gave you to use your two little fingers make all the difference in the world okay so and you know a lot of these notions that are created for our machines are designed to help you and all you need to know is the right setup so like I said I've been there too it took me a long time to learn on my own because I couldn't find anybody to teach me all the answers I ever got was that stupid thread that that's bad thread the machines don't like it the reason why people tell you not to use things or it's not any good is because they don't know how remember that okay manufacturers wouldn't make the product if it didn't work it's the person telling you that can't that doesn't know how that's why you should go back for lessons too you know when there's a special when a sewing machine dealer brings in a special guest artist from a company or a celebrity to teach their methods of what they do you know book that ticket and get in there I have students that come to my classes from all over the country they will fly in to learn my methods of constructing bags my fiber art and you know because they say their local dealers don't teach this kind of stuff all they teach is basic cotton quilting and people want to learn more today and I did too okay so all right so let me change this thread and I'm gonna put some of that metallic sliver that, that tinsel thread in and we're gonna go from there okay all right now I'm going to free motion border with this tinsel thread and I'm using Madeira this time this is spectra thread they also make a hollow thread uh, um, holographic thread you know what it, all, this is uh, the spectra it's called on here and this is the color we're going to be using it's pretty gold okay and on my baby luck Lisa I'm gonna hit my never miss needle threader I like that huh okay so now let's get my cotton my cotton um, duck cloth out here and let's do some free motion again and I'm going to show you that I will be able to free motion on this now I do want to tell you, you hear that thumping noise you hear how it thumps that's because my needle is a little too big for this fabric but I'm not going to change it because I'm going to show you how to do vinyl and I need this needle for the vinyl I can still make it work but if you hear thumping noises like that your needle is one size too big that's a good tip to remember okay so here we go and you can see I am not breaking the thread and again look I'm not going like this I'm not having shoulder pain I'm having flawless results okay so this is a tightly woven fabric it's duck cloth and with a tightly woven fabric one size less one smaller sized needle would get rid of that thumping sound all right and and ladies and gentlemen please if you're new to sewing always change your needles after so many hours of sewing one then you'll know when to change them but you know Nancy Zeman used to tell you always change your needles with every new project and there's a reason for that and I have I'm telling you when I'm on the road teaching some of the things I hear from people oh my god makes me want to cringe it's like a lady had her sewing machine for two years and she didn't know she ever had to change a needle I was like ah oh, someone's never gone back for her lessons so anyway you know you gotta empower yourselves everybody you can't wait for someone to do it for you you gotta read your books read your instru instruction manuals test and play and like I said in my last video when I was preaching to you all about these machines are not cheap come on if you're gonna spend that much money on a sewing machine spend the money on the education so you have the knowledge and the power to be independent okay all right so here we go so there, there that is right there let me cut my thread here okay and isn't that pretty I love that thread oh my god I just love that hollow shimmer and tinsel thread I just think that is just so gorgeous okay let's do it on vinyl what on vinyl you say it's gonna it's gonna I can free motion on vinyl yeah and listen to the difference now 
Here we go. Ready? See how much more quiet it is? So now I am just free motion stitching this in any direction just to sample this to show you. But my thread is not breaking. Absolutely not breaking. Isn't that phenomenal? And I'm going to get exceptional results. This is going to give me more creative time and less fixing, re-threading, all that stuff. Isn't that great? And look how flawless I'm moving this fabric. If I have to reposition, I stop, twist the fabric around, move it, keep on going. My two fingers on both sides is moving this whole fabric. And I got proper ergonomics. I have my extension table. My elbows are sitting up on my extension table. And I am going to be able to sit here all day. And when I'm done, I will never have shoulder pain. Okay? Now, I realize I've only been in this industry for about five years professionally. And I also realize there have been people who have been in this industry for years. And people who tell me they've been sewing for years. Okay? So, the things that I come up with have worked for me compared to when I do everything else that someone else told me. So whatever works for you, and if you've been sewing for years and you have not gotten results, perhaps you should listen to somebody new who's getting results, okay? There we go. Has my thread broke yet? No. Am I sewing flawlessly? Yes. Do I have shoulder pain from pushing my hands down? No. Do I have to wear rubber gloves? No. Okay. I hope these tips I give you all help you. And you know, I tend to be a little bit firm when I talk because you gotta understand being a teacher and being on the road, you get a lot of people who are so receptive because they come to you, but you always get a couple of those people who think they know it all and they come say, what can he teach me? Well, you know, I hope what I teach you can help you because I'm sharing my flawless results with you and what I get, okay? So that's what it's all about here. And I wanna thank you so much. Let's see, is there anything else I can show you in this video? I'm trying to think, is there anything else I can show you? Well, absolutely not. I think this is about enough for this video. I hope what I gave you, you can use. Look, I can keep going all day. It's not going to break. It's not going to break. Got some great results. Great results. And this is on my tower on my machine that I showed you earlier that I'm sewing with. And don't forget to check out Martelli Notions for the tower. Or the, uh, the, the thread stand, the standalone uh, spindle. Uh, great. And it, it, it's, it's industrial built, ladies and gentlemen. So... You know, if you're going to invest in a product that's going to last you forever, that Martelli Notion is going to last you forever. And it's for those bigger spools, okay? All right, let's pop this out and I'll show you. Remember, this was on vinyl, okay? So, and there it is. Oh, so beautiful. Just so beautiful. Love it. I want to thank you for joining me today. I hope the tips that I give you in my videos help you when you're sewing. Know that you're not alone when you try things and you're not having success and that the things that I bring to the table to help you will give you your success. And keep this tip in mind, please, everybody. If someone tells you, no, 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 you can't use that thread. That's bad thread. Or no, 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 your machine doesn't like that brand. Uh, it's probably because they don't know how to use it or it's because they don't carry that brand thread. So my brand sewing machine here can use any brand sewing thread and I've proven that to you in my videos. Okay, everybody, you take care. God bless everyone. Bye.